33.2 amps outside 1.8 kilowatt hours we are at 41 percent state of charge and the charger is running what the hell is going on here guys welcome back to the off grid garage here in sunny and hot australia it is <laughs> i've got my summer t-shirt on it is actually quite nice today and also welcome to the shortest day of the year here in australia that's how it looks like sun is somewhere Yes, my friends, it is solstice day. That means the shortest day for us and the longest one for you if you watch from the Northern Hemisphere. That means from tomorrow, your days will get shorter. Mine will get a tiny, tiny bit longer. I think it is about two minutes per week, but hey, I'll take it. Every minute more light is great. So the shortest day here in sunny, hot Australia has started this morning at 6.38 and we will have sunset at 5.05. .05. So this gives us roughly 10 and a half, 11 hours of sunlight. But is this enough for 41% state of charge? Well, you can hear the grid charger running. I'll tell you more about this in a second. So here's the situation right now. It is a quarter to 3 p.m. We are getting two kilowatts from our solar. This is all the MPPTs and the AC coupled solar on the tilt system, the micro inverters. And we are getting also 700 watts from the grid charger here. The AC load is only 340 watts at the moment. And we are at 41.4% state of charge in the middle of winter. Nice. So, so far I made 16 kilowatt hours and I have used only six kilowatt hours today. That is brilliant. But the worst time is still to come when we turn on the water heater at about 8 p.m. But this can drop my battery state of charge by up to 20%. So I really need to be at 40% every single day to use the water heater as well as all the other load. And, um, <laughs> and then I was a bit scared last night because I saw that we have used uh, 4.9 kilowatt hours to heat up the water, right? But the energy level in the battery dropped by 18.5% during that time. Let me say 5 kilowatt hours, around 20%, that makes 25 kilowatt hours all in total usable capacity. Maybe the cells in the battery shelf have degraded already. But I had a look at my overall consumption at 8 p.m. I started at 16.67 with my consumption and at 11 p.m. when the hot water turns off again and the water is hot, there was 24.71. So the difference is only 8.04 kilowatt hours of which I have used 4.9 for the hot water and the rest was other use. Yeah, But the state of charge dropped by 18.5%. But if you do the maths, but if you do the maths here, 8.04 kilowatt hours divided by 18.5 percent and you multiply this by 100 again you're actually coming to 43.5 kilowatt hours and we have a 44 kilowatt hour battery in here what is it 864 ampere hours times 16 16 cells times 3.2 volts gives you roughly 44 kilowatt hours and this calculation just confirms we still have the full capacity so that's a relief and we can also have a look here at this um, card in Home Assistant. It gives us a bit more of a detailed view. Here on the left hand side we've got our solar system, our 4 MPPT solar charge controller, garage west and east, carport, big shed, and together they are producing 1.6 kilowatt at the moment, which is 11% of the rated capacity of this solar system. So it's not great, but again, middle of winter, 11%, I'll take it. Now, 370 watts are going into the house at the moment, so there is, uh, I think, the washing machine still running, but not heating at the moment, so it's still spinning and using some energy. And up here we can see what the MultiPlus actually is delivering at the moment, because we are getting 280 watts from the tilt system, but we are using roughly 500 watts. But this also includes the DC power I'm using here with the DC to DC converter. 48 to 12 volt and then we supply power here to this network rack up here where all my network stuff sits in this is purely dc powered 
And obviously some of the power is here directly coming from the grid charger we have connected. So that's why these numbers are not matching up at the moment. Down here we've got the grid, we can see we are pulling one kilowatt and we already have imported 5.2 kilowatt hours today from the grid. And of course down here we've got the battery as well. We are on 42% state of charge now, 53.3 volts, 36.9 amps and we are still charging with two kilowatt. Again, part of that is coming from the grid charger. If we keep charging this way, the battery would be 100% full in 14 hours now. And that would be at 4.54 tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, it is actually going pretty well here on the shortest day of the year in Australia. I made it to 42%. And if I'm not mistaken, the battery charger, yes, the vehicle charger for my wife's car will actually kick in at 42 percent state of charge so it will actually start charging at 6 amps and this is the first time we are doing this here in winter time because the state of charge was never that high yeah and this is actually the second part of this video here i want to show you a um, experiment i'm doing at the moment yeah and this is actually the second part of this video here i want to show you a um, experiment I'm doing at the moment and this is why we see the grid charger actually charging my battery. The last couple of years I have never done this before but it kind of makes sense to use power now because this is the greenest and cleanest power we can get now from our grid. This is the grid fossil fuel percentage. You can see at the during the night it's fairly dirty it's 80-90% and then in the morning when the sun comes up it goes all the way down all the way down to 44 percent but we also see numbers in the high 20s even here in winter and this is mainly come from utility solar and rooftop solar so obviously 60 percent of the power is now green and i'm storing this green energy in my battery shelf to use it during the night until the next morning so i don't use any of this dirty stuff during the night so, and this grid charger turns actually on fully automatically now during the day, not only when the battery is very low, but also during the day now to harvest this green energy. And it is actually looking at this graph we just saw. And if the fossil fuel usage goes under 60%, it turns on this charger and we are harvesting this um, cleaner energy in the battery shelf. But as you also know, I have two solar systems which are completely separate yeah one is the off-grid garage system here with the mppts and the tilt system the micro inverters this is all standalone system charging the batteries here not connected to the grid at all the only grid connection i have now is the charger which charges the battery from the grid but of course this is only one way oh we haven't been on the roof for a while guys hey you can see the beautiful tilt system here going into a micro inverter here at the pool and then feeding energy into my AC system. And up here, this row of solar panels here is my second solar system, as many of you know. And this is fully grid connected to the house. So I'm using this power directly inside the house and all the excess gets exported to the grid. Really nothing special, right? This is what millions and millions of people have around the world. But um, in two years time, when we are going fully off-grid here with this electrical system. We have plans to connect this grid-connected solar as well to the off-grid system and charge the battery. And this grid-connected system will then feed the power into the MultiPlus on the output side. MultiPlus realizes that there's power coming in and charges the battery. Yeah? And once the batteries are getting full, the MultiPlus will just increase the frequency slightly from 50 Hertz all the way up to 52.8 Hertz. And this will then stop the AC inverter and it doesn't produce any power anymore. So it's a pretty cool system. And I'm using this already for the last three years here. It never missed a beat. Oh, we want to have a quick look at the charger. I think it has just turned on. Yes, it did. Nice. So we've got 1.8 kilowatt coming from the solar and the charger uses actually 1.3 kilowatt only to charge the vehicle now. So as long as this one is higher than the minimum charge power of 1.6 kilowatt roughly, it will keep charging. Yeah. And there are still 200 watts going into the battery actually. So that is pretty cool. 
only uses excess power. I made a whole video about this um, vehicle charger and how, how it uses the excess power coming from the system here. I'll link this video down below. I think this is one of the best chargers you can actually buy for your electric vehicle or plug-in hybrid. So in a couple of weeks ago I already showed you this um, overview here about my consumption and production. It's always when I make videos we are having this noise. Why is this happening? <sighs> so and then obviously we have the production just from the off-grid system here, the battery shelf. And we also have the total production. This includes also the grid connected solar. And I was running the numbers here for quite a few weeks now to see if the production would be actually enough to cope with my consumption. So the question is now, once we connect this grid connected system to the off-grid system here and can use this additional energy, will this actually be enough in winter time to get me through? So today I have made 7.5 kilowatt hours with my grid connected solar. But once these two systems are combined, I would have an additional 7.5 kilowatt hours in my system here. And this is exactly when the grid connected charger comes into the game now. Yeah, and we can see this here. The charger has already charged 5.4 kilowatt hours into my battery system from the grid. And what I'm doing here for the last two or three days, two days actually, I am charging the exact same amount of energy which I'm exporting to the grid back into my battery. So I'm simulating that the grid connected system is actually powering my off-grid system as well. So I have produced 7.5 kilowatt hours, but I have recharged only 5.4 kilowatt hours because this is only a one kilowatt charger. So the grid charger will take a while, but hey, I want to run this test here maybe for three or four weeks only just to see if it would be enough. So all the power for pool pumps, for the water pump, for irrigation pump, for the gray water pump, for hot water, as well as the vehicle charging, now needs to come from the off-grid system as well. Because we are off-grid, we don't have any connection to the grid anymore. The old grid connected system is now feeding the power into our off-grid system as well. And this is why we can see today we've got a surplus of 16.5 kilowatt hours already. Yeah? Obviously all this energy went into the battery. And that's why we can see 42-43% today state of charge in the battery at the shortest day of the year here in Australia. And yes, of course, I'm losing a bit of energy here because of the transformation from AC to DC. And then potentially it goes from DC to AC again if I use more AC. But it still gives me a very good understanding if I can actually make it with the current production I have. And you know, this is always a crazy idea. We're always saying, oh, we've got so much energy in summer, a big surplus in summer. It would be good to take this energy actually into winter and use it then. Yeah, and people have tried all kinds of stuff. They're heating up water and pumping it into the ground again, and then using this water again with heat pumps in winter time to heat up their houses and stuff like this. Or using huge water tanks inside the house, heat this up in summertime and it carries over this whole energy into the winter time. But nobody has tried this with batteries so far, I think. And as you know, I've got quite a few batteries here and I'm still building more batteries. So I really want to find out if we can charge all these batteries in summertime and then take them over through winter time. And this is not so much from a financial perspective here because obviously buying grid power wouldn't be as expensive as buying more batteries or more solar. Here I want to only find out if this is technically feasible. And as you know, we have done quite a few crazy experiments here in the off-grid garage, so why not this one? And you can also follow this experiment here in the off-grid garage via M. Whenever you see the DC power is going negative, that means that the grid charger is on and actually pushing power into the battery system. And because this is a one kilowatt charger and we are charging the battery only with 360 watts, so obviously the rest 650 watts is being used straight away. Yeah, unfortunately you cannot see the grid system here. Uh, that would be the grid system, but I think I can share this here as well. Um, if I can, I link this all under the video. So you can watch the Fronio system. This is the grid tight system. 
as well as the off-grid system here in the Victron VRM. And if you click on the advanced button here in the Victron VRM and have a look at the smart shunt battery voltage and current, here the lowest point of my voltage was this morning at 7.30, around 7.20, 7.30 at 50.62 volts. And this was at a state of charge of 7.8%. So I still have around 5% left, which is about two, two and a half kilowatt hours of energy. Because when you go back before I started this experiment, I was actually discharging the battery a lot further down. Uh, let me find such a crazy day. Here, for example, the blue curve goes all the way down to 44.3 volts. <laughs> that was very close before the MultiPlus actually turns off at 44 volts. Thankfully, also early in the morning at 8.40, sun came out, voltage rises quickly and recharges the battery. Yeah, but this is at 4% state of charge. You can also find other curves here where I went down to 2.5%, 3% state of charge. But I'm doing this only when I'm here in the garage and doing like testing and see how, if I, how far I can actually go down. And I have never had any disconnection this year so far. But usually I've got the grid charger here connected as well and Home Assistant is monitoring the voltage and if it goes under 46 volts, I think, it starts recharging to 48 volt then. It is just until the sun comes out again the next day. Yeah, my friends, these are all the crazy experiments we are doing here in the off-grid garage with the off-grid system and now as well with the grid connected system. And I'm using this power charger to transfer the energy over from the grid connected system into the off-grid system now. Just want to see if I can make it with all the power plus vehicle charging, plus hot water, plus all the other stuff. I mean, it is not 100% accurate because still some of the power from the house is being used from the grid system directly. And also during the night, we are not 100% off grid with the house, of course. But I think it gives us a good idea here what we can expect once we combine all the systems together. Man, I tell you, I can't wait for that. <laughs> guys thank you so much for 111,111 subscribers thank you so much and welcome to all the new viewers thank you very much to all these wonderful and beautiful people who are donating to the channel here buying me a beer a smoothie and a coffee becoming a channel member or clicking on the thanks button under the video this all makes this stuff here possible you know thank you for leaving comments and liking these videos sharing them in forums but don't send me emails please Still getting around 50 emails per week and I'm totally unable to read them or even reply to them. Leave all your comments down under the videos, please. There are other wonderful and beautiful people who are helping me out, replying to your requests. And it is so much better than an email because now the whole community can benefit from your question and the answer you are getting. So thank you very, very much for not sending me an email. <laughs> all right, my friends, this was the short video from the shortest day, the 25th. 21st of June 2025, shortest day of the year here in Australia. From tomorrow on, a tiny, tiny bit more light for us and a tiny, tiny bit less light for you if you are up north. So guys, in the comments, let me know your location and how much energy you have made today on the longest or also on the shortest day. How was your energy consumption and production today? I'm always keen to hear where you are and what kind of system you have. So share all the information down there it will be very interesting for everyone to read. Guys, I guess until the next video, when we do a review, I've got a very interesting do-it-yourself box here I want to share with you. And it is a very beautiful do-it-yourself box. So I want to share this with you, of course. And until then, guys, you stay charged, stay safe, and thanks again for watching. See you then. Bye-bye.